Good afternoon, Mr. Gerardini. Thank you for hosting us at this uh, here in Ikari event and sports hall uh, for the opportunity for this interview. We'd like to have a few questions uh, directly answered by you so that our followers can uh, have direct message from you. Uh, we would like to start with the current status. Now we are in mid-season and after many ups and downs, injuries, COVID, etc. Uh, how would you evaluate the team so far? Well, it's, uh, it's interesting to uh, you know, evaluate the team uh, at this point of the season because they can open up to different interpretations you know, of uh, the quality of what we have been doing. In reality, I think uh, considering our summer, our, let's say, emergency that we had to manage over the summer, uh, let's call it, you know, like for any other team, but there is always some bad luck, you know, when you lose uh, four, five or six games in, on the final few seconds of final shot, there is also some bad luck. And, uh, and then uh, considering, uh, uh, you know, the improvement through the season. Considering that we got to a key game like the one in, in Villarban that for us was very critical, very important and we managed to lose our two, let's say, most... Uh, uh, Former MVPs. You know, most probably significant pieces. Uh, one in the first half, two in, second, in the second half, you know, instead of... You know, and that, that could have been... a. That could have been the key moment of our season. So, if you ask me today where we are, I think uh, we need to be very appreciative of what the coaching staff and the players have been doing. Because uh, no matter how unfortunate that night was in, in Lyon, uh, we have been able to manage the situation and, and remain in contention, see, you know, both on the Turkish league side and on the Euroleague playoff side. So, being able to achieve uh, this result for this time of the season, still missing Vesely, De Colvo, Bartero, Shayok, uh, Shemus, Floyd, Covid, Covid, Covid. I think, uh, I think it, it also shows that there is there is a good chemistry, there is a good group working together, there is a good, uh, let's say, I think coaches and players are more and more, you know, uh, understanding what they want from each other. Again, let's go back always to the summer emergency, you know, this is, a, uh, this is something that happened and had to be managed and, and it's a group of uh, it's a group that we are very happy with this group, but it was put together with a different driver. So now we have a, we have a different driver. So considering where we are in Euroleague, considering where we are in Turkish League, I think uh, I think we need to be relatively satisfied of where we are. Right. And I must say that uh, uh, you know the club has been very very supportive, because it was not easy, has been very supportive uh, in terms of uh, understanding the emergency, understanding the needs, understanding that we also had to make one correction or one adjustment or two to face the emergency and they put us in a situation where, okay, so far we are in contention and, and we like the idea of, you know, being in contention and fight, you know, and that's where we are today. Well, since we are in February now, uh, the question uh, pops up, uh, like you mentioned last summer, you know, you said uh, in some uh, interviews that some of the transfers were finalized back in February, March. So, I know it's a tough question for you, but are you around some signatures nowadays for the next season? I think... Uh, uh, if you want to run your job uh, properly, uh, it's, uh, 
it's a one year job. What I'm saying is you need to be thinking, evaluating, possibly be ready to make decision 365 days a year, 24 seven. It's, it's a process and uh, uh, nothing is happening today as of today, but uh, we're always thinking, we're always elaborating. We're always uh, trying to see how to improve a picture. We're always trying to measure what we have in place right now. So it's a lot of, let's say, it's very, very important to have a basketball sharing. It's basketball sharing among the, let's say, the managing people with the coaching staff and with the club, because the club needs to be understanding which way we're, you know, we're thinking of what we're trying to accomplish. So to answer your question, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to sign tomorrow, but I can tell you that we're always working. We're always working. This uh, brand new room that you see today is our, in NBA you call it the war room, you know. Mm -hmm. The war room is, mean, this is where we have our scouting meetings. And every couple of weeks we get together and, and analyze uh, domestic leagues, uh, prospects, uh, try to study as much, let's say, names and opportunities as possible. It happens every day, as I said before, but couple of, every couple of weeks we all get together, I mean the, the managing group and the scouting group and sharing, sharing, sharing. The basketball sharing is very, very important. Just a few questions, uh, at least one about uh, the NBA. Having worked uh, each side of the ocean, um, I'd like to get your ideas about, uh, in the last decade, EuroLeague has sent a lot of players to the NBA, and we as Fenerbahce suffered heavily. And having worked at both sides, uh, what's the effect of this uh, for U European basketball? Uh, that's a nice question. Uh, I think uh, if you look at from a player's perspective, uh, a player always dreams to play at, at the top level. So NBA is always the ultimate goal. Uh, it's always the dream. You know, that's, it's very normal when you are talking about basketball. If you're looking from the club's perspective, it's a little bit different because uh, sometimes uh, it's a natural evolution of the player's value and you enjoy it, but somehow you get, let's say, some resources back through a buyout, through something, so you don't lose the player, uh, you know, an important player of your roster, of your puzzle, without any sort of compensation. And But sometimes also happens that, uh, you know, the big fish always eats the small fish, so they come and take the pieces and you cannot do much. I think in general it's uh, very good that basketball is a global sport, it's very good that uh, one-fourth of the players in the NBA are international players mm -hmm. and, and I think this has been the biggest marketing tool for the NBA to become so global and so influent in every part of the world. This helps the development of basketball for sure. I think where, where it's becoming a little more sensitive and I think it, it's, it's uh, let's say, is where I, we should be working, looking ahead, is finding ways to also support the clubs that are producing these young players in order for them to have some sort of protection or compensation to either enjoy the young player at the young stage of his career within your own system or if he has to go to get something back to reinvest in your youth program, in your young players, you know, to create a, uh, let's say, a cycle of resources that benefit the growth of the game also domestically. So, um, right now NBA is, is, you know, it's too big as a dimension, as everything, compared to anything else. And uh, we need to accept that, but uh, we also need to find ways to better protect ourselves. I think there has to be a goal. 
like you mentioned, MBA is too big. The main uh, reason being the the volume, the uh, uh, spectators, followers, and the revenue. And the main reason is that. But how should Fenerbahce and other European clubs move forward regarding the revenue increase? Now, what should the management do in order to enhance the bas- basketball culture at the club? Well, you know, if I try to answer this question, I think we could probably stay here for <laughs> the remaining part of the week. And, you know, we have a game coming up. But uh, I think uh, I think it's... Uh, Uh, there are situations where definitely have not been exploited completely. Uh, the world is developing extremely fast, uh, and I think there are there are financial economical possibilities that uh, are basically popping up, uh, conti- you know, one after the other. Because if if they would have told us. Uh, Five years ago, anything about uh, tokens or about NFTs or about it, we, we said, "What are you talking about?" Mm-hmm. Now these are becoming, uh, let's say, significant resources for mm-hmm. a lot of sport teams in, in, in football, in basketball, in, in the NBA itself. I think uh, uh, an a, a increasing audience definitely is going to improve the value of the TV deals. Uh, we need to hope also to work on, uh, uh, you know, next generation people in order to improve also the the quality quality in terms of the the more of the age of our audiences because again we need to look forward. So our audience is getting older; it's not getting younger, and we need to understand that the game now. Uh, needs to be, uh, you know, also brought to the younger generation, and they have a different way of watching the game. But I think, in general, especially for big clubs like Fenerbahce, Fenerbahce is one of the biggest brands in Europe. And as, when you come to basketball, is uh, you look at, at the social interaction of. Uh, Uh, all the fans are connected to Fenerbahce at the Euroleague level, and you see that we are the the number one team because we have we are so lucky to have such a great uh, fan base. You know, mm-hmm. so many fans following us. But now it becomes very critical to find the right way to translate the numbers of fans, the digitalization of uh, the opportunity eh, into something that brings a real revenue. To the system, to the club, and this this is the key. This is where we have Euroleague working in this direction with the club. So I I, I know that the club, our club, is is working on on, on ideas on, on on see how to. But this is the let's say this is the fu- this is the next future. You know the around the corner for to improve. Uh, Uh, to improve our picture, because at the end of the day, if we want to have a future in doing what we're doing, it's not just a matter of uh, the passion for the game, because mm-hmm. we all in this room have passion for the game, the fans have passion for the game, which is important. Uh, it's not just uh, you know understanding, uh, let's see, our dimension our possibilities uh, what we talk what we just talked about but it's very very important to try to make our business let's call it business but our reality as sustainable as possible if we don't make it sustainable we're not going to have a future so make it sustainable comes from exploiting new possible revenues but also putting in place Let's say rules for the basketball world that translates into uh, better managing of cost and uh, whatever is related to cost, whether it is uh, let's say uh, a more efficient uh, financial fair play or a flexible salary cap or, or whatever. But we have to work in both directions to make uh, any sports, not just basketball, more sustainable. Or or sooner or later. We're going to suffer because, uh, again, in general, the economy 
you know, uh, you know, sports follow the economy. So if you cannot go up and down all the time, because uh, you need to be on, on on strong basis and always be in a position to to make investments, to be competitive, to have a you know uh, a good program that does things the right way, to have a project through the years to improve on on, on the youth programs, to have I don't know any other projects, but always with the sustainability concept in your in your mind. But, uh, that comes my next question. Actually, it is directly related to sustainability. We've been following uh, Fenerbahce College's Safiport team very closely. Mm -hmm. uh, we know about the uh, aims and uh, player development process over there. Because uh, over the last decade, we haven't seen much homegrown players in our team. And when we talk about sustainability, it's very important. So, uh, could you please talk a little bit about this yes, Fenerbahce uh, College in Safiport and younger players? Um, we, you know, we share with the with the club, and specifically, you know, with uh, Mr. Sertac and, and and the president, the need to create, uh, let's say, intermediate level to favor the development of young players. Um, we think that uh, a young player can develop if he plays against competition. If he's put competition of, let's say, of a higher level where he is. We think it's very important for a player to, to start learning how to play under pressure with your back against the wall in order to see how much you can really get out of the, the potential that you have. We, we have been, in, in, let's say, uh, We've been in a position to start this project this year, and uh, and I think uh, you know it's it's interesting to see where you know how and where we can bring this project to help developing homegrown players. But I don't fully hope you don't get mad at me, but I don't fully agree with your analysis. What I'm saying is. Uh, it's not true that uh, we have not been able to develop young players. I think uh, we were able to develop, let's say, good young players considering the picture that we have in this country. We just need to understand, and unfortunately this is, this is the reality, but we just need to understand that uh, it's not simple to be a young player in Turkey, and it's even more difficult to be a young player at Fenerbahce because of trying, always trying to play at the top, always trying to play behind millions of fans that puts a very special pressure on you. So the ball for a young player is much heavier than the ball for the regular player, regular young player. What I'm saying is. I remember through my eight years at Fenerbahce that, uh, again, last night we almost lost in overtime to Tofas and the point guard on the other team that played 40 minutes a game was Berk Uru. Yeah. And he, he grew up in our program and he's a, a great guy and a very good basketball player. But when he was here growing up, of course, his, his room was not, I say, enough to let him grow and I think he made a very good decision by saying okay I need to find somewhere else a way to improve and now he's a national team player too. Mm -hmm. Same thing we could say about uh, Egean Arna who is having a great season at Besiktas. He grew the same way. Uh, very shortly we will watch Bakhtashir and, uh, and uh, Berkay Jandan is the same situation. They all grew through our system. I don't want to mention Omer Farouk Q7 because otherwise we will go back to what I said before of protection of a club that produces, let's say, good uh, young players and then the young players go to, into with a different, uh, let's say, dream in their mind and we don't get uh, anything back. But Omer was a great product of this youth program. Right. Of course, 
we should be in a position to do more and we want to do more we have the we have shared with the club and the club is supporting let's say the idea to invest even more on on the youth program to do different things to be better connected to all the Fenerbahce schools around the country to try to let's say develop domestic players because developing domestic players is a way to promote the game is also a way to let's say uh, have interesting pieces in the puzzle that you're trying to build and having players coming through your own program also give you a possibility to you know uh, expose to expose your uh, let's say uh, program to any other country around and, and to develop players uh, let's say for you and for uh, whatever other situation I mean I uh, you talk about NBA I had 15 in 15 years at Benetton we had uh, uh, one year we had three players in the NBA draft and two were first round pick and they were just developing from our youth program and again but you need to believe and you need to put resources in this and you need to you know and, and it's not always simple and that's why it goes back to balance uh, sustainability investments and ideas eh? and also to relate to younger generations uh, growing up uh, loving the game you're right uh, I, maybe I meant is the younger players who are still in the team it's not true that we didn't uh, develop no it's not true we developed but because of the reasons we just mentioned couldn't keep in our team Anyway, we have to believe in the program. Uh, are you planning to recruit uh, our formal players for scouting? I mean, we know that Bobby is in some capacity. Bobby Dixon is in, in our system right now. We are we are trying to uh, improve the structure that that we have. And uh, again, uh, I go back to the same concept of having a strategic plan, sharing a vision and, and of course trying to build through through all this. Uh, I have to say that both you know Mr. Sertac and the president have been on board on the idea of uh, growing as an organization because we've been very successful on, on these past eight years but the organization at the end of the day is is a small organization. It's not a huge organization but we understood that we need to improve the quality of what we offer to the players what we offer to the staff through technology through you know all the different devices that we can put around the arena to improve the data's uh, collection etc etc et just like we understood that we wanted a different you know you are hosted today in brand new offices and we're going to have a let's say, the museum as well, we have other plans that are going to be made, uh, let's say, known in a short period of time, and we want to grow as an organization, so Bobby was a great uh, addition, uh, and it's too bad that right now he's, he's not available, but he, you know, it's uh, because of, you know, family, family reasons, but he, we hope he can come back soon, but that being said, you always need, you always dream and to grow as an organization in every, every area. It's not just scouting, uh, there is also uh, marketing, there is also media, social media, uh, you know, ticketing. We, oh, at the end of the day, a club is made of different areas and you want to grow as an organization. So, and when it happens that you can keep the connection from, you know, with let's say people who have also been familiar with the organization in the past I think it's, it's a plus also to be recognized by the basketball community you know so but again our aim is to to keep growing as an organization very well you, you've been with us almost uh, eight years here in Istanbul at Fenerbahce uh, and we're very happy, very happy about that and we hope to have it more what are your plans for the future? My wife does not have the same idea. <laughs> <laughs> she, is, uh, she actually sees it completely the opposite. <laughs> she, she keeps telling me, don't you think it's about time to come back home? <laughs> uh, again, uh, I feel very... Um, 
you know, I feel, you know, the engagement with this situation, uh, otherwise I would not be, you know, here all this, all this time. I feel the love of, uh, you know, the Fenerbahce community, I feel the support of the club and, uh, and I think, uh, again, we will have to discuss the future, but uh, uh, again, I, I would like to find a way to, you know, stay involved with the program as, you know, as long as people think I can, I can help the pitcher and then, and then we'll see. I mean, uh, uh, the passion of the game sometimes uh, takes you out of the reality. My reality is I'm a little bit older than, than I was eight years ago and then I need to, and I need to, let's say, consider that too. You know. But uh, I'm very happy to be here. I feel the privilege of being uh, yellow and blue and uh, and then let's see let's see what life brings you yeah. us too we were very happy about, happy about that as well uh, thank you very much for the comments mr gerardini uh, it's been a really uh, fruitful uh, interview uh, i'd like to ask a final question uh, in closing you've been in turkey for eight years have you had a, a uh, chance to uh, except away games uh, to travel around uh, what is your favorite place and any closing remarks in Turkish if possible no in Turkish I cannot make you happy in Turkish I can only say to Shekhar for everything I had <laughs> but uh, I have enjoyed uh, I have enjoyed going around for basketball reasons but I also had uh, the opportunity to visit places uh, again not many but uh, uh, I always try to find the time to to visit uh, around the places where that I know because of basketball reasons. But uh, I'm pretty familiar. The only place that I that I want to go and I have not had the time yet is Cappadocia. Oh, okay. but other than that, I think I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. Thank you very much, Mr. Gerard. You're welcome. You're welcome.